Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a recap of um, July. I can't believe that it's already August and we're already more than halfway through the year and so it's so exciting to see like what I've been reading so far this year, where I'm at on my reading challenge. So if you haven't been here since the beginning of the year, I am trying to read at least 100 books this year. Um, my goal on Goodreads is actually, I think, like 110. I don't think I'm going to hit that because I'm actually six books behind at the moment. But I think I'll definitely hit the 100 books in a year. I did that in 2021, and it was so great to read so many different books. So that's my goal for this year. And every month I've been doing a recap to see kind of where I'm at with the challenge and what books I read and how I enjoyed them. So I'm really excited for some of the books this month. I read a lot more print books, um, but I didn't listen to as many audiobooks, so it made for overall less books, but it was still a really enjoyable month of reading. I did read six books total last month. Two of those were audiobooks, so in the beginning of the month I finished these two audiobooks, and then I went on vacation, so I didn't really have my phone, and I was really focusing on reading some of the print books that I had, and that has kind of lasted um, since I've been back from vacation and I've enjoyed being able to read all these books. And as you can see, this whole stack right here is my TBR stack. So I have a long way to go, but it's really fun to be able to read all these books and to have books in my hand. If you saw my video from last week, I bought a ton of books. So that's really fun just to be able to read all these books I've been looking forward to all year. So in total, I read 2,204 pages. And there's no five-star books this month, but there was a lot of four-star that I really enjoyed and a couple of really terrible ones. So starting from the beginning, first book that I finished last month was The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. And the subtitle is What the Internet is Doing to Our Brains. This one is only 280 pages. This was one of my audiobooks, and I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. So if you saw my video from June, I finished God, Technology, and the Christian Life. And then my mom listened to The Shallows and really enjoyed that and recommended it. So I'm kind of on this technology book kick, which is really fun. Um, the problem is that I finished this back on July 9th, and I don't remember a ton about it. So basically, it goes through the science of what technology is doing to our brains. He even goes back to ancient times and whenever we first came up with letters and writing and how that changes the way that our brain works works, for example, whenever books were first created, our memories immediately went down because now they knew that they could start looking up stuff in the library and they didn't have to remember everything off the top of their head. So just interesting little things um, like that and it goes through the whole book up to modern times. So it was written in 2009 so it's not extremely modern but it goes through all of history and how just different things have changed the way our brain works and how now our attention spans are way down, we don't remember as much. Really fascinating read. Yeah, it goes back all the way to written language, talks about what that means for our brains and memories, and then goes all the way up to Google. I found it um, very fascinating and it does definitely want you make to it does definitely make you want to like slow down and sit in the library and just soak in all that information instead of relying on the internet to look it up all the time. Okay, and then the second book that I finished this month was Father and I Were Ranchers by Ralph Moody. This is number one in the Little Britches series. I had a friend who read it a couple of months ago and we started listening to it as a family. And um, so we've just finished it this month. It's been a couple of months listening to it. It was a really enjoyable story, just a good old living out in the country as a family in the 19th century, I believe. Or no, 1906. So but they move out to Colorado, they start this ranch, and you get to see the struggles of starting a ranch, what that looks like for a family. The main character, I believe, is like nine, and it's really neat to see how back in 1906 they actually gave their kids a lot more responsibility, expected a lot more of them, and they were allowed to make mistakes. And basically this boy acts like a man in doing the chores around the, the farm and working at other people's farms. So that was really interesting to read. I thought it was a really sweet family story and we all enjoyed listening to it. There was a lots of parts where we laughed out loud and just the way it's read and written is just engaging. You really want to learn what's going on in the story and you feel like you're there with him. The only thing I would say is there's a lot of 
rancher language, right? Um, a lot of light language. So if you don't want your kids repeating that, maybe be careful um, what age you listen to it and if they notice those kind of things because um, there are some parts where there's a lot of light language in there. So that's just one little warning. And I gave that one um, four stars as well. And then the next book is Between Shades of Grey. Okay, so now we get into the print books that I read while we were on vacation. So a lot of these I flew through, which was really fun just to sit down and to go through books really quickly like I used to do when I was younger. Um, you know, you get those really engaging books and you just read them in two or three days. So that's basically what I did while I was on vacation. I had no electronics or social media or anything and I just read outside. I will insert like some pictures or videos that I have here of us reading. Hello guys, it has been a long time since I have recorded anything. I was thinking about maybe recording something while I'm on my vacation, so if you didn't see on my Instagram, I talked about how I'm basically on vacation for the month of July, so I'm trying to get some little snippets of videos of what I'm reading. I maybe got a few pictures that I'll stick in this video, but I didn't really get any video footage of me reading, but I've been on vacation, let's see, Monday through now it's Thursday, so like four days. And I finished two whole books, and I'm really excited to review those books for you because I really enjoyed them. And then I've been reading The Blessing of Humility tonight, um, but it's just been a really relaxing vacation. We're out here at the lake, and there's a beautiful sunset, um, and it's just been so fun and amazing to be able to just read. And honestly, I've barely picked up my phone, so that's been really awesome. Um, so I look forward to videoing some more later. So the first one that I finished was um, Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sapitas. So I read The Fountains of Silence earlier this year, or I listened to it, and I really enjoyed it. And if you saw my video from last week, I bought the whole box set from her. And this one is much different style than The Fountains of Silence was. This was more of a choppy uh, first person narrative so you have a lot of short sentences. It took me a bit to get into and just to be able to appreciate that kind of writing because I usually like a more well-rounded long sentences but this can be really emotional and get you into that person's head and emotions. So I did enjoy it once I got into it. Storyline of this is a girl from Lithuania and the Soviets come and take her and her family. They don't know where her father is and they take her to Siberia. So you follow their whole trip all the way to Siberia and you have um, a map in the beginning which is really helpful so they start over here and they take trains um, they stop along the way at a labor camp and then eventually by the end of the book they get over here to Siberia and this is based off of true events that happen what was really interesting is this is during World War II if you remember the Soviets were on the side of the Allies. So none of the Allies really knew what was happening in Siberia and Russia at the time because they were hiding it because they knew if the Allies knew, they would start to treat them like Hitler in Germany. But they were doing basically the same atrocities to people as Hitler was. And it's, it was just really heartbreaking to read. I think there is there's an interview with the author and so she talks a little bit about the history behind it and what made her want to write this it happens in 1941. Uh, I really enjoyed just learning about that history. I gave it four stars so it's not my favorite of her books that I've read so far but I did still enjoy it and would still definitely recommend it. It's a book about concentration camps so obviously it's going to be hard in that sense to read but you do get a good sense of what it was like and I didn't feel like it was completely hopeless like you see the, just the kindness of certain people in there and that not everyone was completely evil and it ends on a good note. So I did enjoy that. Um, I would definitely recommend this for, I guess, women to read. It is a, a female author and there are some conversations. She's a young girl and just some conversations and things that happen that may not might not be appropriate for a young boy to read, but I would definitely recommend it for girls and my younger sister read it and really enjoyed it too and obviously there's so much good research in here and you just learn so much about history so especially if you're like learning about the history of World War II I would definitely recommend this book to read. And then the next book that I read on vacation 
was my first Elizabeth Musser book. So I don't remember, I think I picked this up from our local Half Price Books. I was happy to find one of her books. This was the first one I bought and I took it on vacation and I was really excited to read it. So I read Between Shades of Grey and then went straight into this one. And even though these are both modern fiction books, I feel like they are completely different. This one's not necessarily historical, although it is written about a time period before it was written so technically that categorizes it as historical but I think it's based off of a lot of things in the author's life and it is a long book the font is kind of small and it is over almost 400 pages so it did take me a while to get through even though like the previous one I was focused on this one I was reading hard and I gave it four stars because this is definitely like where the sentences are long and you're just fully invested in the characters there's so much character development in it, you know the people well, and you're ready to see what's going to come next. So you start off with a car accident. The main um, character is in the prologue. And then you get a date like two years later, and the main character is having trouble just getting back in a car and driving after this car accident. And so she's struggling with these voices in her head, and she hears about this driving school that helps kids to get back into driving. So that's the uh, first chapter. Then you get to chapter two and you start to jump around a lot. And you have a bunch of different characters that are introduced rapid fire. I didn't find it too confusing though. The characters are so vastly different and you aren't just seeing tiny little bits of their life. You really feel like you're seeing their life. And so you don't really get confused with all the different characters. So you have Silvano Rossi, a Italian editor trying to work his way up in the publishing world. Then you have Janelle. She is a wife to a missionary in France. Then Ted Draper is an in investor who's trying to make a lot of money and maybe you won't follow the law in everything. So then you have Katie Pendleton, who is this woman going through a divorce with a teenage daughter, and that is pretty much all the characters. So then you get to chapter three, and you really get to get into the story. By the end of the book, all of the characters are interwoven. They all read this book in there, and it's so interesting just how the author weaves everyone's story together, and you see it all come together in the end, and you don't really see it coming but you're not mad that you can't predict it. I don't know. She just writes in a way that is so good, so beautifully written. And I have bought a lot of her other books since reading this. And as a, a Christian author, I think she did a great job of everyone's life was actually infused with Christianity or if they were unbelievers, they were learning about Christianity. It wasn't just an afterthought like a lot of modern Christian fiction that I read. The complaints that I would have is that, so like this one, the whole topic of the book is words unspoken. So words that you hear in your mind and kind of like those um, voices of doubt. And so in the beginning, it's like, okay, I can definitely see this is normal, like those doubting thoughts that you have. Then by the end of the book, I don't know, there's just a few instances where it's kind of weird. It's like, is this actually an audible voice that this person is hearing? And it's just kind of weird and you don't really know what to think of it. And then especially in the end, it's like, oh, the voices of truth are battling those lies, right? Okay, scripture, yes. And, but it almost seems like she's touching on like the audible voice of God. So it's kind of questionable, but that was kind of weird for me. And then there are a lot of hard topics dealt with in this book. I don't even know. I don't remember like everything, so I can't tell you everything that's touched on, but there's definitely suicide, there's partying in their uh, person's past, there's the death of a child, just all of these hard things that people are going through, so it's not like anything bad happens in the book. So I wouldn't say it's not a clean book, I would just say it deals with all of those topics and the heartache that comes after all those things. There's also a couple of characters who are having marital issues, so there is some discussion of intimacy within marriage. I would definitely recommend this for an older teenager, but very good book and I do trust this author because I know someone who knows her and I'm excited to see her other books that she's written. This is an older book, I think. She wrote this in 2009, so I'm excited to see some of her newer books in this stack. There's quite a few. I'll probably read those coming up soon. Okay, so that was a four-star book that I read on our vacation.